Hello, friends, and welcome back to 20 Questions With. For those of you who are new here, this is my fun way of introducing you to other costumers and costumers by asking them 20 silly questions. Today, we're talking to Nami of Nami Sparrow. Welcome to my channel, Nami. Hi, it's so awesome to be here. Nami has been on my channel before. We've all seen her in the inclusion panels, and we did a co-COVID situation. What is that? What was that thing that we did? It was, ooh, it was the my fr making my first costume. Oh, yeah, 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 we did a live stream, so it was fun. We had a good time. Can you tell us a little bit about your channel and your Instagram and your name change? Yeah, so uh, hi, everybody. I'm Nami. I formerly went by Neko Nami Cosplay everywhere, but I recently just switched my Instagram over to be Nami Sparrow, and that's also what my YouTube is. Um, my Facebook's still Neko Nami Cosplay because, honestly, I... I don't even touch it. It just cross posts post my Insta stuff and that's it because it's a terrible graphic. But yeah, so um, my name is Nami and currently I am trying to actually make YouTube videos correctly. It has been a bit of an adventure, but I have one costuming video up and we've got another one hopefully coming within the next couple days as I uh, finally maybe finish my Christmas sack gown just in time for um, Thanksgiving. No, no, just in time for nothing. Yeah, just in time, just in time for my birthday. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, You're, this is gonna go live in February, but whatever. <laughs> just in time for Valentine's Day. Exactly. That's it. That's exactly what I intended. <laughs> but um, before that, I used to make uh, some bullet journal videos and some travel vlogs. So uh, and then some miscellaneous vlogs. So those are still up on my channel if you want to see like me from five years ago talking to a camera and just be generally awkward. So nothing has changed. I'm into that. <laughs> it is hilarious. Honestly, I love it. <laughs> are you ready to play 20 questions? Heck yeah, I am. What is the weirdest thing you've ever had to do for a job? Ooh, okay. I think the weirdest thing I've ever had to do for a job would actually be um, my current job. We had to figure out how to mix buffer because everybody decided that the buffer that we... Let me start over. I work in biology. <laughs> I was making miscellaneous liquid for biology things to happen in to sell commercially um basically it was like it's like half alcohol and a bunch of miscellaneous salts that you shouldn't eat to make things dissolve better and it's not good for you at all but we had to make this because the company that we normally outsource to what decided that they're just not going to do anything because it's the holidays and they were like screw you have fun do it yourself <laughs> and so <laughs> yep so we literally bought a giant metal like canister and put a plastic carboy full of the buffer into it and filled the canister with water around it and then wrapped a heating like silicone rubber thing around that canister to heat the water to oh. then heat the mixture. And so this is mixing and we finally got it to work like within an hour. So we were so excited and we opened the uh, top to show like the engineering head of our company, like one of the CEOs to show him that this was like dissolved. He meanwhile, doesn't realize it's open and picks it up and flips it upside down and dumps half of the buffer on himself. We're just like. <laughs> That's, that is the screenshot thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is, guys. Wow. Yeah. That's, so, it was, uh, is that stuff caustic? It's not caustic, but it's mutagenic and be no, it's not technically mutagenic. Okay. I was like, do not ever get stuff on you that no, yeah. where the word mutagenic could be used. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. But this stuff, it's literally like, it's called lysis buffer. It's designed to rip cells apart. No, absolutely yeah. not. All don't, right. don't drink it, basically. Mm -mm. Yeah. Don't touch it. If peanut butter wasn't called peanut butter, what would it be called? Nut spread. Nut spread. Okay. That's very generic. What, what if there was like an almond form of that? Nut spread too, electric boogaloo. <laughs> All right. Fair <laughs> enough. That's it. That's, that's, I've decided generic nut spreads. Yeah. Okay. 
I <laughs> sorry, I went into a completely different place. Okay. <laughs> if you, if you could trade places with any other person for a week, famous or not, living or dead, real or fictional, whom would it be? Mitch McConnell, so I could like finally get the Senate to do stuff and oh, actually oh. pass stuff. You're, you're way smarter than me. <laughs> what what did you pick? <laughs> well, I mean, I would pick Mitch McConnell, but to do other things. I mean, uh, like, well, let it be known that I would also end my time in his body by literally throwing myself off a cliff. Yeah. So. Okay. There we go. <laughs> same thing. Like at first, I would use his body for nefarious purposes. For, for good purposes. Yeah, exactly. Which to him is nefarious, apparently. And I would also, you know, get him like plastic surgery on his face, give him a chin, and then have him die. <laughs> If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? Tried to hold a stranger's baby. Really? I am incredibly, like, touch-starved of small things in quarantine, which is a very, like, yeah, no, it's a very specific thing to say. But, like, the hardest thing for me this quarantine has been not petting strangers' dogs, not petting not going up to strangers and being like oh your baby's so cute or like little kids for some reason little kids like me in public places and they'll just run up to me and like interact with me and I just missed it so much so like I would probably get a kidnapping charge because I would just like you know like hold a kid and be like no I can't let go (laughs) all right watch your kids folks (laughs) I'm sorry I'll give them back I promise Uh, that's funny (laughs) What is something that a lot of people are missing out on because they don't know about it? So this is going to be a little odd, but I have to say it is like biology, like high level research biology. Like y'all are missing out. This stuff is so, so cool. Like listen to your scientists, but like especially listen to your biologists because we know what we're talking about for the most part. And also just like There is so much cool stuff happening in biology right now and just like in research science generally. And like, I literally read miscellaneous research papers for fun because like, I literally just did an advanced degree where I had to read them for not fun and reading them for fun now is like, yay, everything I want. But it's like, I I just wish everybody had like the ability to understand like research papers and like journal articles like that and then they without just passing out yeah and they could just read them for fun too because I have weird hobbies <laughs> costuming and reading research papers I know right it's that weird niche where it's like <laughs> myself and Christine from Sostein yeah your Venn diagram is very specific <laughs> <laughs> if you're also in this Venn diagram please let me know we should hang out <laughs> So this is a question that is specifically picked for you and you're the only person I've asked it of, not because I don't think anyone else could answer it, but I think you're going to have the most interesting answer, which is what big problem do you think technology will solve next? Ooh. (laughs) Okay. So, well, the obvious answer right now is COVID, but I am optimistic that the next big um, thing that technology is going to solve is going to be the next COVID. So hopefully, Mm. since we are actually, you know, in an era of internet and in an era where something like a pandemic is really, really documented, and we're also in an era where we have the medical ability to solve it, I hope that our next, you know, 100 years from now, inevitable recurrence of some sort of big virus, because if you look at history, guys, it's been about every hundred years. Every hundred years, like basically on the 20. (laughs) Like, like we literally knew this was coming and people ignored us. And I'm like, I'm like, "Mm," I feel, I feel like the scientists in all movies and I'm just like, but so I think that next time something like this happens, we will actually be better prepared for it. And we will literally be able to point at solid documentable evidence because of course, you know, we do have documentable evidence yeah. from the olden days, but they were yeah. also the olden days before we understood what germs were. So, yeah. but they somehow still kind of knew how to react in some ways, like stay away from each other kind of things. Listen, it's kind of funny because the miasma theory of medicine, which is like what we had before this was sort of like bad smells make you sick. And while that is wrong, when it comes to trying to heal yourself of that, 
it is also kind of right when it comes to trying to not get the thing yourself, which is stay away from the sick people. Yeah. Who are kind of stinky because they don't shower. Although everyone is stinky in this pandemic, like I have to say. all stinky here. My my showering has has grown to a concerning level. <laughs> um, so the reason I wear my hair like this is because I sleep in a pineapple because I have curly hair. Uh-huh. But also because of this pandemic, I I will if I don't have to go to work, I won't take the pineapple down. So uh-huh. I'll just end up in a stage which happens every weekend where I will take this hair tie out and the hair will just stay up. Stay there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is the height of fashion. Get it? Literally, if you had a theme song, it would be who sleeps in a pineapple in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, me, no, me no, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm SpongeBob. All my uh, my life has come full circle because I used to be called the Goofy Goober when I was a kid when that movie came out. And I kind of hated it, but also kind of loved it. <laughs> who is the most interesting person you've ever met? Oh, man. I have met so many people and so many people that are interesting yeah. that it feels really weird to have to pick one. Yeah. I can tell you mine while you think. Yeah, please do. Mine was Bill Gates. Damn. I had an actual conversation with him in which he asked me what I did and I explained what I did for a living, like being a web producer and that stuff. And he asked me like follow-up questions and looked actually engaged and interested in what I was saying. And I don't, I he was definitely not interested. He's Bill Gates. He's a genius, but like <laughs> he was the kindest person mm-hmm. to, to a technology kid who was like, you know, 28 or whatever, just like, ah, uh, you know, at him. He was so awesome to me. Like I, oh my God. I think that guy's awesome. Like I, I love that he's spending his like intelligence and his money, like trying to solve world problems at this point. Like that's fantastic. But like, also he's just a really nice guy. That's so awesome. He's like the, the <laughs> opposite of Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I do have mine. It wasn't a long interaction because it was after a Broadway show, but it was Alan Rickman. Oh, whoa. Yeah. That's cool. So back when he was, oh my God, this was, I want to say 2000 and somewhere between 2012, maybe around there. That's like yesterday to me. You guys say like back when, and I'm like, my I back when is like 1970. No, I have to like, <laughs> like remind myself that 2012 was back then these days because I keep being like, oh yeah, like so when I graduated high school, which was 2012, and I'm like, yeah, I graduated in '95. <laughs> I was a year old then. <laughs> At least I existed, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> But so um, I met Alan Rickman after one of his shows. I genuinely can't remember what show it even was. It was like a play or something. And it was one of the last times he was on Broadway. And I don't really remember what I said to him because I also, the only reason I remember, like I know the dates and stuff is because I also took a video while I was there. Like I had, I think either Mm -hmm. I was like selfie recording it or my dad was recording it for me. But like, I saw him, I like, I said something to him and he like smiled at me and he walked away. And I just remember being like, wow, he's Mm -hmm. real. And he was just very kind and like, you know, like taking the time to like interact with everybody. And it was a really cold day too. And I just remember being like, wow, what a nice man. Yeah. I grew up in like LA area and I went to Comic-Con every year and all that kind of stuff. So I've met a lot of famous people and it's always astonishing which ones are unbelievably kind and which ones are like having Mm -hmm. a bad day let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and just say they're having a bad day oh yeah I always I always (laughs) say they're having a bad day if they're like if I get like the weird story where they're not nice unless every single story is that they're terrible or Christian Bill (coughs) sorry I I had to cough (laughs) obviously you weren't saying a name or anything no No. (laughs) but so unless like you get unless like almost every person or like the vast majority of people who meet them say that they're like not nice I don't tend to believe it and I'll be like yeah having a bad day because as yeah. somebody who has had to like do like convention guesting things it is mm-hmm. exhausting and I'm yeah. like not even a real human I'm like a goblin yeah. in a trench coat so usually I actually like tend to leave people alone because especially growing up in LA 
you Mm -hmm. sort of get used to it. Like Tom Cruise lived across the freeway from me and he like (laughs) frequented the like car show at the Wiener Schnitzel by my house. So like usually I leave people alone because they're just having dinner and you just like, I mean, I would be weirded out if people were like mobbing me while I was just trying to have dinner or whatever, but like occasionally you have an interaction with them and I try to be like super low key about it. Like, hey, thanks. I like your work and that's it. And I just Mm -hmm. boot. But like, sometimes they're really engaged and really into it. And sometimes they are like GTFO. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I, um, oh man, I, one of my accidental favorite hobbies became at on like the Sunday of Comic-Con, uh, my dad and I would usually wander and go to separate places. So we would end up meeting, like re-meeting in the Sheraton lobby and just sitting in those couches. And that's where we would meet each other. But the Sheraton lobby is also like where a lot of like, or is it the Marriott? Whichever one's the big one. The big uh, one. Are you talking about San Diego or San New York? San Diego. Okay, San yeah, Diego. Marriott, yeah. Marriott, okay, yeah. yeah. So the Marriott lobby. And we will usually just sit there and wait for the other person. And the last time there was a Comic-Con, I was sitting there waiting. And this man is also sitting there. And I look at him and I'm like, hey, that guy looks a lot like the actor who plays the Martian Manhunter in <laughs> Supergirl. But that can't be him. But then I stop and I'm like, wait, shit this is comic-con it, mm-hmm. it can literally be him and it was yeah. him and i was like i really like your work and he was like some other cast members are coming down you should like hang out and I'm like ah. that's awesome so he gave me the tip and uh basically i got to meet the actress who plays alex as well and i was like ah. oh that's cool that's really cool yeah there was uh james marsters was on a plane i was on once and he was sitting like one row in front of me and one row over and he was like helping some woman put her bag up that he didn't even know he was being really nice and i was like are you James Marsters? And he's like, yeah, I am. And he's like, he goes to shake my hand. He was like, see, so he's Spike on Buffy. He also reads the oh, my Files. God. Like to me, he's a big deal. Cause like, I'm, I love him. I think he's great. And uh, he was really nice to me, but I didn't even mention Buffy. I was just like, oh, I really, I love the Dresden Files. And I love that you read the audiobooks. Like that oh, really makes yeah. me happy. And um, he was like, you have great taste. <laughs> amazing (laughs) then I sat there for an entire plane ride just like staring at because all I could see was his arm like on the side of the you know and I was like that's James Marsters arm (laughs) (laughs) amazing yeah would you ever try space tourism if you had the money for it absolutely without without a doubt you're like yes (laughs) that's me shaking my head at the idea of ever saying no to the opportunity if I could afford it like I in a heartbeat yes I don't know if I would I am a I'm a surface dwelling monkey I don't like being in planes I can't imagine that being comfortable I'm pretty sure I'd puke like eh. I'm a yeet me into space monkey Mm -hmm. uh Loki as a child one of the first books I had was like about the planets and I made up a planet song about Uh the planets and then I was like what if I could be an astronaut and here we are this I don't know if you can see this this, those are the planets really nice Oh, I love that. I have a tattoo of space. I think I would go into space if it was like far. Mm, yeah. Like I couldn't, I, if I can see the earth though, like if it was space tourism where you're just going to like the ISS or something, I don't know if I could do, I think looking at our planet, I would get really like nauseous and I get upset and like my brain would explode. I think if I went really far away, I think that's different. Cause then you don't have like a base of, I just want to get back onto that thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Low key, I would go into space with the expectation that I would inevitably vomit at something or because of something. But also, I am not really phased by that. Oh, um, I am because I have this thing where if I if I vomit, <laughs> the internet gets to know. Uh, all of my muscles in my body clench, like my entire body clenches down, which means everything comes out. Oh no! So oh, if no. I puke. That's not the yep. only thing that happens. <laughs> no, same thing happens to my mother. We yeah. we learned this unfortunately when she was drunk in Mexico. It was a Fun time. times. <laughs> I got texts about it. I wasn't there, but my sister and my dad both texted me and they're like, you will not believe what mom just did. And I was like, I <laughs> Yeah. So I, I, I can't like, I, and you're sitting in a like small confined space with a bunch of other people, like, eh, that seems unpleasant at best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. probably. What is something you thought would be easy until you tried it? Literally everything. For a while, 
I was I was a gifted and talented kid so um so was I. everything was easy for a long time and then yeah. I went to college and everything was really difficult so um I would like to say college because I was a you know kind of um full of myself kid and I was like you could do anything everything's easy and then I went to college and I was like shit mm. I keep cursing I'm so sorry sorry <laughs> but I went to I went to college and I was like oh man uh so this isn't easy uh I guess I just won't do anything not a good decision by the way college for me was yeah. super easy but like life <laughs> life, adulting, life was yeah adulting. like paying rent significantly harder than expected <laughs> yeah saving money not super great at it but I'm starting to get the hang of it ish it's best if you can, I don't know if your workplace has this, but you can actually ask them to direct deposit into more than one account and you can ask them to divert some of it into a different account. Ooh. Yeah. And if you do that and you just do not pay attention to that other account, that's how it's done. Uh, what I did was I set up a, um, so I know when my check will deposit. So right after my check deposit, mm-hmm. it automatically yeah. deposits half of it into another account. That's so I genius. just make yeah. a point to not look mm-hmm. at it on payday and yeah. then the day after I'm like oh yes I only have half the amount that I should have this tracks don't look at the other account don't look at the other account the other I account also do account. micro investing so like I do like you know acorns or whatever those things are um I use stash it's where uh weekly or whatever schedule you want like I have it pull out 35 bucks a week and it invests in Disney Nike and Apple and it just puts money into those stocks and man did that boom <laughs> so <laughs> yeah well and it's only like you know i i had it at five bucks a week for a while and then i added another five and now it's at 35 dollars a week but that adds up yeah like i accidentally get ten thousand dollars a year and you're just like <laughs> how did that happen right <laughs> yeah. i should probably learn how the stock market works right like that's an adult <clears throat> thing that i should do oh uh i have a book that you might like and uh Ooh. especially like Ooh. retirement investing kind of stock market thingies um that i can send you Yes, definitely. Uh, it's super cheap and super easy. Generally love books, so yeah, uh, it's a great thing to to look into. And I have a bunch of friends who are like super into. It's this thing called Fire, which means financial independence, right. retire early. Oh, one of my friends was literally just talking about this like a week ago. Wait, no, it might have literally just been Tuesday. <laughs> That's a week ago. Whatever. Um, yeah. So they they are super into it. I'm like on the periphery of it. Cause I also like spending money uh, and you can go in as deep as you want or not, but like just knowing the concepts is very helpful, I think. So I'll send you some stuff on it. What is the best advice you've ever been given? Okay. So this advice is from Dory from finding Nemo and it is just keeps women. It is kind of what got me through my depression, like on a very like basic level. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what can, and it like low key gets you through everything or at least gets me through everything because it's like, everything sucks just keep swimming at least you're kind of remembering shit yeah yeah that's a, that's actually great advice just keep swimming it's very good very yeah. profound for a cartoon but also cartoons are really profound these days so i don't even know why that's surprising to me that's I just love soul and it was like chef's kiss yeah very good if you had to use a fake name what fake name would you make up it would still be sparrow it would be vox sparrow vox Vox because so there are twins in critical role their names Uh are Vex and Vax and I'm like and it's me the third twin Vox that's awesome (laughs) because I'm a nerd (laughs) what is the nicest compliment you've received so I might have already told the story on one of our things but honestly I can't keep track of anything so who knows. But so back when I used to do a lot of anime cosplay and I did my first anime cosplay that like blew up in 2014 and it was Nui Harime from Kill la Kill, um, a person at a convention who was a fan of my work and like the fan of a fan of my Necronomy cosplay page gave me a piece of artwork of me as Nui. Oh, wow. First time I ever like got anything like that or like really like had that sort of interaction with the person and I was I was awestruck and I also then proceeded to freak out and try to hug them but this costume had like giant foam pigtails that were this big on either side of my head and today I ended up um bitch slapping them in the face with my hair yep and Mm -hmm. 
it was pretty much like three seconds of them being like, wow, you're the coolest person ever. And then them being like immediately like, oh, you're, you're just a nerd too. And I was like, hey. I hate to break it to everyone, but that's kind of the case with everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if a movie was made of your life, what genre would it be and who would play you? It would be a comedy. Hopefully a romantic comedy at some point, but but at this point, just a comedy. Um, I would be played by a, a Bollywood actress named Katrina Kaif. Cool. And yeah, it would be pretty neat. Yeah. If you could commit any crime and get away with it, what would you choose and why? Mm, there are so many crimes, though. Okay. Very important question. Can I commit this crime repeatedly? And no, still you get you get one commit, crime to commit. One off, one crime, that's it, you're done. Yeah, and like no one ever knows, you never get caught, you get away with it. Okay, okay. I would do a heist. It would be a heist for that diamond on the queen's crown that is from India. Mm-hmm. And I you would- are not the first person to say this. I would heist it back. And then I would secretly just give it back to India mm-hmm. or I would just literally hand it to my mother. <laughs> you, you are, you are actually the third person to say this. Really? Yeah. This is yeah. hilarious, but also, um, we and, all three of us should be friends. <laughs> and the other two were white people. Damn. British though. Mm-hmm. We're all friends now. I've decided. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'd like them. If you could choose any two famous people to have dinner with, who would they be? Any two. Mm-hmm. Dead or alive? Mm, no, this one is just two famous people. Just two famous people alive. All right, I'm going to go with alive. Um, Matt Mercer. Okay. And Wait, who's Matt Mercer? So he is a voice actor and the uh, like dungeon master for Critical Role. Okay, uh-huh. And he's like, he's voiced a lot of things that I really like and just critical role. And he's a really amazing storyteller. So I would just want to like pick his brains about telling stories and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the second one is like more of a thirst reason than a real reason, but we're going to do it anyway. I would want it to be Joseph Gordon-Levitt so I could just squish his cheeks and be like, you are so cute, but so I handsome. Love him. And I just... You're wonderful. Have you seen, I think he's, he looks like the, the love child of Keanu Reeves and Heath Ledger. Right. God. Right. Have you seen those ones where they show Joseph Gordon Levitt's face in, in half and the other half is Heath Ledger's face and they're identical. <gasps> oh my God. You I should check that out. That. Literally the first thing I'm going to Google after this. It blows my mind every time. I'm just like, oh my gosh, you are like, you are like Keanu Reeves and Heath Ledger had a baby. This is amazing. Oh also, I just love him. I think he's a great actor and I think he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's just, he, he seems like he's a very good bean and he's also yeah. very handsome and I am weak for that. Mm-hmm. I like his face. Yeah. My like face. Do you know who Graham Norton is? No. He's like a, he's like a, mm, a, a Johnny Carson sort of kind of guy in England. So okay. I would pick him and Stephen Fry because I think the conversation would be very intelligent and it would be very, very funny. <laughs> the conversation would be me talking to Matt Mercer about like storytelling and trying to hold Joseph Gordon Levitt's hand. Like that's <laughs> like under the table. Yeah. Just like, like I'll, I'll just like slide my chair closer to him every three seconds mm-hmm. and just be like, can I hold your hand, please? <laughs> Hey, get consent though. That's great. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What is your most treasured possession? Mm. Hmm. I'm actually not sure I have one, mm-hmm. but if I have to think of like, if I have to think of it in terms of what would I save if my house was on fire? Yeah. It would be my bullet journals because They kind of, while they don't actually have any like possessions in them, they have like my memory keeping and like the things Mm -hmm. that have been happening in my life. And I started bullet journaling back in January of 2018. So it's been, you know, three years now and it's been like some good times and some bad times, but it's also like got a lot of good, good memories in there. And 
I didn't like I used to be really good about scrapbooking but I don't know where those old scrapbooks are so like this is like the closest thing that I have to like that in physical form so yeah yeah the zombie apocalypse is coming what three items do you grab let me just clarify people pets all that's those are not items okay good okay. good because I was like items. there's three people in my immediate family uh physical items and they need to be in your house right now mm, okay can I do my sewing kit so I have a box or I have a, like a little like little cubby box that's got like smiling dogs on it and it's full of sewing supplies so I, I pick a, I picture a caboodle <laughs> no it's like it's like so it's literally like one of those sewing boxes that you could get at Joanne's it's like uh-huh, yeah okay yeah it's like that thing it's like you know mm-hmm. just good old box and it's like squishy and soft and I love it mm-hmm. um I would also take this isn't very practical but I would take my teddy bear with me because I feel like I would definitely need that comfort and I've had that thing since I was very little my mom gave it back surgery as in she sewed up its back when he ripped open one time and I love him a lot and then is it cheating to say a backpack of food no you can all right a backpack of food like specifically non-perishable yeah good for good for a long time food yeah I find it this question is very interesting to me because people get hung up on it a lot and they can't well everybody's like what about your pet? And I'm like, a pet is not an item. Stop it. (laughs) Um, But then uh, people, people grab the most impractical stuff, which I I find very funny. Like uh, people grab their cell phones and I'm like, the zombie apocalypse is here, people. There's no no cell phone. Yeah. (laughs) Who are you going to call? Let's be real. I live in the middle of nowhere. Like sometimes I don't even get cell phone service regularly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So like, what song has the ability to cheer you up? So it is uh, Counting Stars by One Republic. Mm-hmm. Uh, hilariously, this song um, could have given me a lot of trauma because I listened to it on repeat while studying for organic chemistry in, in mm-hmm. college. Except F O Chem. That's what I have to say to that. <laughs> F O Chem. <laughs> See, I was really good at Orgo One, though. So this is what I listened to during Orgo One, literally nonstop, emerged with an A minus. I was like, let's go i got a good grade in it f o kim like that's what i for life like i want a t-shirt but But so (laughs) you know listening to that song like always cheers me up because one it's a cheerful song and two it also just reminds me of my last success before my great depression Mm, mm -hmm. (laughs) and i'm like i'm like remember when you did it because you did do it i mean that's a cool cool like memory and association to have like I'm glad it didn't traumatize you. That's great. I mean, it still traumatized me, but like, <laughs> yeah. not I mean, the that song. much. <laughs> yeah. All right. You get to spend one year on a desert island with any cartoon character. That cartoon character is your only chance of survival. However, after that year is over and you're no longer on the desert island, that character will try to kill you. Which cartoon character do you choose? Well, originally it was going to be Katara from Avatar The Last Airbender because champ, but um, she would absolutely be able to murder me very easily. Um, I believe there's only one answer to this question. Huh. Oh, no. See, the only person I can think of right now is because I'm still stuck on Avatar The Last Airbender. So I'm like, Aang, because he would, he knows all the bending so he could help me survive. But at the end, he's a pacifist, so he wouldn't k- want to kill me, so he wouldn't do it. No, he's going to try to kill you. Oh, he's going to try? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They will try. They will try. None of these are good. This is all bad. Noel. Noel, I'm gonna die from cartoons. <laughs> Why have they betrayed me so? Ah. You know, I think I'm just going to go with Katara because honestly, like, she could murder me. Like, that's fine. Like, she's allowed. All right. So what I think is the only actual answer is Wile E. Coyote. Okay. Because he can't kill that Roadrunner. (laughs) Like. (laughs) You're right. But he seems to have, like, some sort of workshop and a bunch of, like, plans documents for, like, how to do stuff and, like, build things. So that would be very helpful while on the island. 
he yeah. seems savvy but very bad at murder which is yeah, yeah. the best way to go yeah. um in that in that logic i would also consider tom from tom and jerry because he can't seem to close the deal yeah yeah but i also don't know if he has any practical survival skills. yeah i don't think he's gonna help you in the practical he, survival skills. Yeah, i don't think he has any actually yeah. my um b answer was yogi bear because okay. uh he has a picnic basket and that seems like a good thing to have when you're trying to survive on a desert island just saying Ooh. and he's he's like his attempt to kill me will definitely fail i would say poo also like yeah. poo? because like i don't think he would be very good at murder like he could try like, but he's if- not gonna help you survive either he's just gonna sit on mm-hmm. a, a, on a on a log in the distance with his back to you telling you like it's gonna be okay <laughs> Honestly, sometimes that is what I need because Maybe I feel like I, mean. yeah, no, I, I am resourceful and I am a biologist. Like I'm not a survivalist, but I have enough yeah. nature knowledge that I could get it done. So if I just had somebody there being like, Hey, it's okay. Oh, then Pooh okay. is the perfect one for you. Yeah. Plus yeah. Pooh will just give really good hugs. And honestly, that's mostly what I need Yeah. in any sort of isolated situation. Cough. Thank you, mother. The real MVP of this quarantine. Cough. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever read the Tao of Pooh? I have not read it it's great it's, it's like Taoism, but like pooh bear right yes and there's I've the, the tay of poo of wait the tay of piglet Ooh, okay yeah those are great books like uh i took a I, well i have a minor in philosophy um mm-hmm. so i well i actually read these in high school but it was also part of my philosophy cur- curriculum but it's it's a great way to explain Taoism, but then also there's a lot of poo in there which is great <laughs> you love poo i i I, who doesn't love poo (laughs) noelle's meme of 2021 who doesn't love poo (laughs) serial killers that's that's yeah what movie do you rewatch over and over again Ooh, hell's moving castle oh that's a great movie i love that movie except it has christian bale in it and like -uh. but i do love that movie (laughs) i I watched that movie as a very, very young girl and it um, definitely shaped my, um, I'm, I'm young, but I'm also like spiritually a grandma. So we're just going to roll with it vibes and yep. I love it a lot. And for anybody who loves Howl's Moving Castle and hasn't read the book, like please read the book. It is also so good. And they're very different that it does seem like you're reading two different, it, it, it seems like you're consuming two different types of media, even though you can see how they're connected, but they're just. <sighs> so Morgan and I have that podcast and it's on our list of things to read. In the podcast it, for is, sure. it is so good. And it is just, it's so magical. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if this question's on my list, but I know you have the one question that's like, if you could like- That was your 20th. Oh, was it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, then I'll- what, then No, I'll, say the thing. Well, it tells Moving Castle the book. So uh-huh. I would read that again, oh. just because it was so magical the first time. I do also technically have another book that I would read. It so is, the question is for people who haven't seen this before, is if you could experience a book or movie for the first time again, which one would it be? So mine is somewhere between *House Moving Castle, the book, and The Two Princes of Bamari or Bamar. It's a Gail Carson Levine book. And I just, I really love it. It's like very, it, it's very like fantasy, Ella Enchanted vibes. It's, mm-hmm. she also wrote Ella Enchanted. So it's like, it's that same feel. It's not like, you know, anything profound or crazy, but I just, it was so magical. Yeah. And it's objectively one of my most favorite books. Yeah. How's Moving Castle is a great, great movie, man. Do you watch the dub or the Japanese version? Both. I'll switch back and forth depending on what mood I'm in. Is it different? It's, I mean, I don't know if the Japanese is different because it's the same subtitles. Oh, it is the same. sub. Sometimes the subtitles are completely different. Yeah, sometimes the yeah. subtitles are different. I usually will just stick to keeping whatever the direct English translation and what the English words subtitles are and keep mm-hmm. those just because if you, if you have the option, I like to do that. Um, I tend to mostly watch Hell's Moving Castle in the dub because that's what I originally watched it in. Yeah. But same. I'll go back and forth for other things. And basically my rule of thumb is this. Start with whatever pops up first or is the easiest to find. And if you find one of the voices annoying, switch to the other one. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. 
I always find it really weird when you're used to one and then you switch to the other one and you're like, ah, these voices are all wrong. (laughs) Yeah. It's one of the reasons I can't watch the, um, the dub for one piece because I'm so Mm -hmm. used to the sub and I just like, I can't, if, if Luffy isn't voiced by a middle-aged Japanese lady, like, is it even Luffy? I have that problem with Akira. This, this dates me to tell you that mine is Akira and yours is. (laughs) It does date you, but it's, it's, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. It's super weird the other way. You're just like, what? No, nuh-uh. <laughs> yeah. All I right. have some that I'm really attached to, but some I'm also like, eh, kind of can't last. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super controversial bonus question. Is a hot dog a sandwich and why? Okay. So logically, I know I, I know I answered this question during COVID. Mm-hmm. My original plan for this question was to go back and rewatch our whole panel and be like, what did I even say? Because I couldn't remember. I but don't I remember do either. I know what I stand by now. And my answer is based off of a whole bunch of your videos, but it's mostly based off of Bernadette being very pedantic about semantics. And Except she's wrong. Like I proved her wrong. wrong. Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry because she is wrong. Because yeah. my, point, my point is, yes. A hot dog is a sandwich, Mm. but only serial killers would call it a sandwich because a hot dog is specifically a subcategory of sandwich that has been called a hot dog. And if you call it a sandwich, you're, you're, you're a serial killer. That's. Yeah, I could agree with that. The, the tax it's people think it's like, what do you call it though? And that's not the question. The question is a taxonomy question, which is, is it in this category? Y or N? And like, yeah. As a biologist who has recently, um, like come to terms with the fact that everything evolves to crab like even (laughs) though they're not initially crab and even though they're not closely related enough to all be crab Uh but that everything everything does eventually be crab I can tell you two things one a hot dog is a sandwich (laughs) and not a taco call it that it is also not a taco it is technically a subcategory of hoagie as well yeah yeah I would go with that for sure but but one day like us the hot dog will also be crab for we will all return to crab. All right. That is what evolution has dictated. Okay, cool. I think I just like full on went mad scientist there at the end. (laughs) No, that's the way you should be for sure because you are a mad scientist. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Thank you for joining me today, Nami. I will leave a list of Nami's accounts down below so you can go check her out and show her some love. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and leave me comments down below about what you guys are up to, what you're working on, what you're watching, all that kind of stuff. And we will see you soon with another video. Bye, guys. Bye.